I began publishing books on alchemy back in 1978. My main series of books is called Magnum Opus and currently amounts to 40 volumes. These are all handbound by myself in small limited editions. This series of books are for the most part editions of key alchemy texts from the 15th to 18th centuries which I have had translated from Latin, German, French or Italian. Many of these books contain series of illustrations which I have hand coloured. The Crowning of Nature, for example, has 67 coloured images of symbolic processes taking place in flasks. Another important book is the Atalanta Fugiens with its series of 50 emblematic engravings. One of the most sought after of my books is The Three Tables of Man. This mystical work was created in the 18th century and consists of three large engravings with sections which open up to show underlying areas. I coloured the original engravings and made this up into a facsimile of the original with the opening out plates. This remarkable series of images was created by Dionysius Freyer and shows how one descends through the planetary spheres down onto the Earth. Over the last 20 years or so, I have been trying to get people to take an interest in the amazing emblematic imagery of alchemy. However, I found that most people could not engage with the woodcuts and copper plate engravings in which these emblems were made. Thus I began to colour these emblems to make them more accessible to people. Many emblems, particularly engravings, are very complex in themselves, weaving together scores of individual symbols. About five years ago, I began producing large format prints of these images. One of the most spectacular emblems I have worked on is the Ripley Scroll. The Ripley Scroll remains one of the most intricate and well-conceived examples of early alchemical symbolism. Many of the key symbolic elements in alchemy are found depicted here. The alchemical birds, the green lion, dragons, trees, suns and moons, male and female figures, and the whole work is obviously constructed as a kind of alchemical sequence in which the alchemical process is illustrated through a series of tableaux. Back in the 1970s and 80s, I had created a number of alchemical paintings but I began to seriously use the medium of oil painting about 10 years ago. My intention was to create facsimiles of key alchemical emblems and representations of alchemists. The first group of six paintings I made in 2000 all sold immediately to a single customer. The paintings of David Teniers have long held my attention. His rather romanticised depictions of alchemists in their laboratories became a popular genre in Dutch painting in the mid to late 17th century. In 2001, I made some facsimiles of two of his paintings, together with one of Adrian von Ostad and part of the very well-known painting by Joseph Wright of Derby, which is entitled The Alchemist in search of the Philosopher's Stone, discovers Phosphorus. Recently, I have made some facsimiles of a number of emblematic works, including two images from the obscure 18th century Clavis Artis of Zoroaster. 
I also continue to be inspired by the imagery in the wonderful Splendor Solace manuscripts. This, for example, is taken from one of the earliest versions of the Splendor Solace. It shows the man with a red glassy globed head emerging from the swamp. Around 2004, I began to focus upon the early oil paintings on board, which developed in the 15th century. I was amazed by the technique and detail in these works and decided to attempt to make modern facsimiles of these. After attempting a few simple works, I enthusiastically began creating a copy of the Hugo van der Goes Temptation. This required many hours of work. Just painting the leaves on the tree in the Temptation took me over three days. I decided not to sell this as it marked a development in my art. As I developed my technique, I wanted to try to find the limits of what could be achieved and then work to make facsimiles of two major 15th century paintings, the Magdalene of Roger van der Veen and a work by Albrecht Altdorfer, both of which intrigued me. Both of these stretch my abilities to the limits. Again, I find it difficult to consider selling these as so much work went into creating these two paintings. I am always researching and looking at emblematic material from diverse sources. Among these is a rather amazing work by an unknown Lower Rhine master of the late 15th century, depicting a young woman casting a love spell. I really wanted to make a copy of this beautiful little painting, but my initial attempt failed as I worked at too small a scale. But when I painted this in a slightly enlarged form, I was able to complete it successfully. I find myself also very drawn to the emblematic Masonic tracing boards. Though not a mason, I find the imagery of these boards very engaging. Over the next few years, I hope to make facsimile paintings of many of these enigmatic works. In 2009, I became especially interested in the paintings of the Temptation of St Anthony. I was greatly intrigued by a mid-16th century painting ascribed to Peter Hoyce and a wonderful 17th century satirical version by Jos van Kreisbeek. This theme emerged in Western art as early as the 14th century and continues to this day. Contemporary artists, even major ones such as Max Ernst and Salvador Dali, and Peter Hoosen here in Scotland still explore this art genre. The theme was invigorated in the early 16th century by Hieronymus Bosch and a number of his followers created their own version of the temptation. Over the next few years I plan to work further on this project and eventually have an exhibition on this theme.